All right, so this is a quick walkthrough on question five on our day five packet for some practice, just to get one of these larger proofs out of the way so you can see it done right in front of you. So in this one, we're given that TQ bisects RTS. So TQ bisects RTS. I'm going to put an arrow to kind of show me that this guy is a bisector. And that TQ is perpendicular to RS. And we're supposed to prove that the triangle on the left is congruent to the triangle on the right. RQ and QS are congruent, and TQ bisects RS. So we're just going to go at it and see what we have here. So I'm going to start with my statements and reasons. And then I'm going to write my givens back down. TQ bisects angle RTS, and TQ is perpendicular to RS, and those things were given to us. And now on to step two. Now one of the things I do to keep myself organized is when I see a bisector or a perpendicular, I don't automatically write on the diagram what's congruent. I only write it on the diagram once I've shown it to be congruent in my statements and reasons. That way I can keep track of what I've done and what I haven't done. So if TQ bisects RTS, that means that this angle is congruent to that angle. So I have to actually write that down. Angle RTQ is congruent to angle STQ. And the reason being an angle bisector creates two congruent angles. You can write that in any way you want, as long as it says something about a bisector splitting an angle in half, making two congruent angles, something like that, you're covered. All right, so those are now equal. Let's see, what else do I have here? Ooh, TQ is in the middle here, this guy, and that's got to be a reflexive property. So TQ is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And then last but not least, up here they told me about some perpendicularity. So when things are perpendicular, I have two right angles that are therefore congruent. It always takes two steps, perpendicular, two steps. Step one, identify the right angles. Angle TQR and angle TQS are right angles because perpendicular lines form right angles. And number five, I should then have angle TQR is therefore congruent to TQS because all right angles are congruent. And then when I look at my diagram, I have an angle, I have a side, and I have yet another angle. So for number six, I can finally say that triangle RTQ is in fact congruent to STQ, and that's by angle side angle. And then if those triangles are congruent, all their corresponding parts are congruent, including RQ and QS. And that would be CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And if RQ is congruent to QS, doesn't that mean TQ bisects RS? Yes, it definitely does. So now I can say TQ bisects RS. And the reason being, a bisector splits a segment into two congruent parts which I had right here. I showed it right before. So this is what an eight step proof looks like, where you have to kind of keep track of everything that's going on throughout the whole thing. So uh, one other thing that I wanted to do with you guys before we stopped is I want you to just quickly take a peek at number 12. So if you scroll, you flip, and we look at number 12. On number 12, we have some overlapping triangles and perpendicularity here. So I just want to give you a heads up that when you get to this, which will be in class tomorrow, 
you have some perpendicularity which is going to take you two steps to talk about these angles when it comes up again. So only one thing we had to go over in the video today. You should hopefully by the start of class tomorrow have filled out what we just went over and done everything up to including number four. So your homework was to do up through number four and this five minute video for number five which will leave you in class tomorrow the rest of the proofs to do on your own with a little bit of assistance. All right, so we will end with a joke today. Uh, the joke today is what kind of vegetable is an elephant's favorite? And the answer would be squash.